Uh, hello, welcome to my channel. And uh, in this lecture, I will speak about mesh and the nodal analysis of Kirchhoff's law. As you remember, we have two Kirchhoff's law: is the Kirchhoff's voltage law and the Kirchhoff's current law. And the mesh and nodal analysis is the uh, analysis which uses these two laws to analyze uh, direct current surface. So uh, let's start uh, first with the short explanation of these two laws and then we will continue with the methods of two uh, this analysis. So let's start with the uh, Kirchhoff voltage law. So Kirchhoff voltage law. Uh, for this law let's take a simple diagram which has uh, voltage source and uh, which has uh, uh, resistance. So let's uh, denote that voltage law is the uh, Source is a 10 volt and uh, we have resistance of 200 ohm. And uh, for the Kirchhoff voltage law, we have to denote uh, the nodes of this loop. So let's say this uh, node of 0 volt and the node of 10 volt. And uh, as you remember, and this is a law that always when we have a voltage source is a positive and the load is a negative. So we can uh, make a, uh, a row for this is a voltage right and this part is a voltage drop and voltage drop we can write down as a voltage drop of 10 volt or voltage right of minus 10 volt. Both expressions, these two expressions, is the same. So now we can uh, write our equation for the Kirchhoff voltage law. So voltage right minus voltage drop equal to zero. If we put our numbers, and we say that 10 volt minus 10 volt equal to zero, because this voltage drop is a 10 volt. So let's uh, complicate a bit this uh, diagram, and we use two resistors. And again, we have. To uh, 10 volt voltage source and uh, to the resistor by uh, 100 ohms each one. And again, we denote our node. This is zero node and this is a node of 10 volt. And here in the middle we have node which says a 5 volt because we have uh, this voltage drop of uh, 5 volt and this part is also. 5 volt and this is uh, between them is the voltage drop so uh, this part is the rise of 10 volt now we can also use this equation and uh, 10 volts minus voltage drop 5 volts and 5 volts equal to 0 or we can write down final equation this is sum of voltage rises minus sum of voltage drops equal to zero and this is Kirchhoff's voltage law for the circuit and uh, it also has a simple or shortest uh, equation so for this part we can take a node so this is node and we can go through this load through this loop so here is a 10 volt voltage drop 5 volt 5 volt and equal to zero and we say that sum of voltages in the loop equal to zero so this is Kirchhoff's voltage law and we can start from uh, either point and it will always the truth that sum of the voltages in the loop equal to zero we can start from this part you can see drops drops 5 volt 5 volt 10 and then we have plus 10 volts equal to zero. Or you can start from this 5, 5, and plus 10. And it will be also uh, give us the truth of the Kirchhoff voltage law. The sum of the voltages in the loop equal to zero. This is Kirchhoff voltage law. Now let's proceed to the Kirchhoff current law. Uh, for this part, we have two uh, resistors. And between resistors there is node which connect these two resistors. 
and the Kirchhoff current law is more like uh, the law of the conservation of charge. So the charge is never stored in one point. It's always going in this point. So we say the charge is going inside of this point is equal to the charge is going outside. So let's check. So we have the current which is going inside the resistor, going through the resistor, through the nodes, and it's going out. So let's take this is I1 and this is I2. And we can make equation that I1 equal to I2. So the amount of current which is going inside the node equal to the amount of current which is going outside so the node. This is uh, Kirchhoff current law. So let's complicate this part. And we take another resistor, it's R3. And also we have current going through this resistor. And let's say that this is I3 current. So now this expression is not value anymore because in this position the current I1 is not necessarily equal to the I2 because we have I3 and we have to write down another equation. So I1 is equal to the sum of I3, 2 and I3. So the Kirchhoff law says that current going inside of the point of the node equal to the current going outside. Or we can take the sum of the current going inside equal to the sum of the current going outside. So, let's take another example. So we have node and we have wire going inside. So now we can take that, uh, assume that all the current going inside the point. So let's take this part of the uh, equation. Sum of the current going inside equal to zero. So we can say that true or, or not. So let's uh, denote them by one amp. So and uh, this one will be unknown current because we don't know uh, what is the value of this current. And uh, to make it true, let's sum them. One plus one plus one plus i equal to zero. And uh, to make uh, this true, we have to make this current equal to minus three. So, 1 plus 1 plus 1 minus 3 equal to 0. So, it's going through that all of the current going inside. Actually, this should be going outside. So, we have some of the current going inside equal to this part. So, but we can say that some of the current going inside, the point equal to 0. Another, we have node and bunch of the wires going inside. In this type, let's take that, assume that all of them going outside from the point. So, and now we take this part of the equation. So let's say, sum of the current going outside is equal to zero. And let's take all of them by one up. And this one is unknown. To know it, we have to make this equation. So, to make this equation true, we have to uh, show that this current is equal to minus 4. So now it's true. And uh, this is Kirchhoff's current law. So sum of the current going inside the node equal to the sum of the current going outside of the point. Now we can proceed to the method of current uh, circuit analysis. And we start with the mesh current method. So mesh current method is a network analysis technique where the mesh or loop current direction are assigned arbitrarily and then Kirchhoff's voltage law or Ohm's law are applied systematically to solve the, for the unknown currents and the voltage. So for this part, let's take a simple diagram with the two sources, V1 and V2, and the three resistors, R1, R2, and R3, connected in the series and parallel. So, uh, the mesh current pattern consists of following steps. 
Step 1. Identify and level the current loop. In this part, in the first step of the mesh current method, is identifying and leveling the current loop within the circuit. To do this, we must find at least one loop current passing through every component of, in the circuit. So we make this uh, our circuit diagram and we denote all of them by the voltage source is 12 volt and uh, 3 volts and the resistance R1 is 2 ohm, R2 is 2 ohm and R3 is 1 ohm. And we make a loop. You can see here is the I1 and this one is I2. And uh, the choice of each current loop direction is entirely arbitrary. However, the resulting equations are often easier to solve if the currents are going in the same direction through the components which, with multiple current loops. For example, you can see that uh, in this position we have two currents, I1 and I2, and they both flow through the, this uh, R3. Where is my... For this uh, resistance. And they mesh or intersect each other in this resistance. Here, uh, I1 and uh, I2 is going closer. And they intersect each other. So, if the assumed direction of mesh current is wrong, the answer for that current will be have a negative value. So next part, step two, label the voltage drop polarity. So this step is to label all voltage drop polarities across resistors according to the unit direction of the mesh current. So we take again our diagram with the loops and uh, we can make polarity for all circuit elements. And points to remember, the upstream end of the resistor will always be positive and the downstream of a resistor will be negative. This situation happens because the resistor is a load that drops voltage when current flow through it. Remember uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law, which says that when we have source it's always right and in the resistors it's always drop of the uh, load. Battery par parameters, polarity are dictated by their symbol orientation in the diagram and may or may not agree with the resistor polarity and assume it loop current direction. So here you can see the long showing our uh, positive and the short end is the negative polarity. Uh, number three step. We have to apply Kirchhoff voltage law to each loop. So using Kirchhoff voltage law, we can now step around each of these loops, generating equations representative of the component voltage, drop and polarity. So again, we use our diagram, and now we can write down equations. Here, this equation for the first loop. So we say 12 volt minus in the uh, resistance 1 is R1 I1 and uh, resistance 2 is I1 plus I2 because in this position, as I said before, we have intersection of two currents. To make it simple, let's take like this uh, uh, 12 minus 2 I1 it will have 2 amperes or 2 ohms times I1 and uh, 2 ohms plus I1 plus, uh, plus I2 times I1 plus uh, I2. So the middle term of the equation uses the sum of the mesh current I1 and I2 as the current through the resistor R2. This is because mesh currents I1 and I2 are going in the same direction through the R2 and thus complement each other as I said before. So now we can distribute the coefficients of 2 to the I and the I2 terms and then combine the I1 terms to simplify the equation as follows. 
So you can see that we just write down this 12 minus I1 uh, minus 2I1 minus 2I2. And uh, by summing in, now we have equation as 12 minus 4I1 minus 2I2 equal to 0. And this is equation for the, with the two unknowns. We don't know I1 and uh, also we don't know I2. To, able, to be able to solve two I know mesh currents, we must to have two equations. So let's make equation for the second loop. Let's repeat the process for the right loop of the circuit with current I2. This will provide us with another KVL equation. These two equations and only two unknown currents we can solve for the current. As a creature of habit, we will again start from the lower left corner of the right loop. And this is our right, right loop. And we start from this part. And we go through the loop. So, uh, R2 times I1 uh, plus I2. So remember here, in the resistor number 2, we have intersection of two currents, I1 and I2. Plus R3 times I2 minus 3 equal to 0. Let's put our numbers. So 2 times I1 plus I2 plus 1 times I2 minus 3 equal to 0. So again, let's simplify. This equation as on the for the first loop and we end up with 2i1 plus 2i2 plus 1i2 minus 3 or 2i1 plus 3i2 minus 3. Now we have two equations to uh, solve our uh, current. For step 4, solve the simultaneous equation for the unknown current. In this step, with written two equations, we can use any of several methods to mathematically solve for the unknown currents I1 and I2. So first, let's rearrange two equations for an easier solution. So we take this uh, 12 and 3 volts uh, for the equal. So 4I1 plus 2I2 equal to 12. And the 2 I1 plus 3I2 equal to 3. So to find I, I1, let's get rid of I2, of this I2. So to do it, so we have to uh, multiply first equation on 3 and second on minus 2. And then we have to sum them. So uh, 3 times 4, it will be 12. Here will be 12, 12, and here 2 uh, times 2, it will be uh, minus 2 times 2, it will be minus 4. So plus, it will be 8. Here we get rid of them, and here uh, 12 times 3, it will be 36, and here will be minus 6. So here we have 30, if we divide, so 8i1 times 30, so if we divide 30 to 8, and it will be, so i1 equal to 375 ampere. Now we can easily find i2 by implementing this 375 into I1. So I2 will be minus 1 and 5 ampere. So now, step 5. Redraw the mesh currents and determine the branch current. So in this step, knowing that solutions from the previous step are values for the mesh currents, not branch currents, we must go back to our diagram to see how they fit together to give currents through all components. The solution of minus 1.5 ampere for I2 means that our initially assumed current direction was incorrect. In actually, I2 flows clockwise direction at a value plus 1 ampere. Here. 
So this one, when we say is minus, but to simplify, we redraw this current flow direction for I2 and the voltage zone for the resistor at 3 as shown on this figure. So here you can see that all both of our uh, currents going in the same direction. And uh, now from this mesh current we can determine the branch current for our circuit. So we can easily see that the current uh, through 12 volt source and the R1 is 375 ampere. And since only this mesh current passes through these two circuit components, and the current pulse, uh, 1 and 5 ampere is showing through the I3 here, through the R3. But here we don't have the current because here we have two currents. So we have 375 and we have 1.5. So it's going down and this is going out, up. So now we have to sum of them and now we have for the IR2 is equal to 2.25 ampere and going down and now all of these branch kinds we shown on this circuit diagram here you can say that we have two kinds going or three currents in this diagram and uh, step number six in this step, we calculate the voltage drop. So in this step, after determining all branch currents, we can use on flow to calculate the unknown voltage drops across the resistors in the circuit. So VR1 equals to IR1 times R1 so, or I1 times R1. So it will be 375 times 2 it will be 7.5 volt VR2 is IR2 times R2 or I1 plus I2 or minus I2 times R2 it will be 225 times 2 it will be 4.5 volt and the VR3 is IR3 times R3 or I2 times R3 1.5 times 1 it will be 1.5 volt so now we have all three voltages of the our circuit diagram and we can check results returning to the Kirchhoff voltage flow for our two loops so loops one VB1 minus VR1 minus VR2 it will be 12 minus 7.5 minus 4.5 equal to zero so now we can say that Kirchhoff voltage flow is the true for this uh, circuit and uh, for the second law is also uh, VR2 minus VR3 minus v, V2 so 4.5 minus 1.5 minus 3 equal to zero. and uh, for the second uh, loop uh, Kirchhoff voltage law is also true the node voltage method in the DC node network analysis technique based on structured application of Kirchhoff's current law this method involves converting voltage sources to current source and replacing resistances with equivalent conductors. So now we have uh, our uh, circuit. We replace our voltage sources and the resistors into conductors. So the not voltage method on DC network analysis solves unknown voltages at circuit nodes in terms of a system of Kirchhoff's law current laws. So Kirchhoff's current law equation. The node voltage method looks a bit strange because it replaces voltage sources with equivalent current sources. And also in this method, resistor values in ohms are replaced by equivalent conductances. So remember the conductance is reciprocal of uh, resistance with units of Siemens. But once understood, the node voltage method can provide simple technique for quickly solving various complex circuits. So let's uh, start with the node voltage method steps. It also consists of 
five steps. So step one, we have to level all unique voltage nodes. So we take our uh, circuit. In this circuit, you can see that we have a source of voltage. B1 is 10 volt, and we have second source of voltage is minus 4 volt. And we have R1, 2 uh, ohm, R2, 4 ohm, R3, 2.5 ohm, R4, 5 ohm, and uh, R5, 1 ohm. And we take nodes for V1 node, this, and this second node, and uh, we take uh, zero, uh, uh, V0 at the reference point. So a common node V0 is chosen as a reference point and is typically the ground node in the circuit. The other unknown load voltages in our circuit diagram V is V1 and the V2 will be calculated concerning to this point. So step two. We have to replace all voltage sources and series resistors with the current sources and the parallel resistors. So we need to replace all voltage sources and their associated series resistors with equivalent current sources and the parallel resistors. So here we have our diagram and we have to replace is to the current source. The current source value is calculated by this way. So current is uh, voltage source over the uh, R in series. For this part, we have R1 in series with the voltage source. So, and it will be 5 ampere. Now we can make uh, parallel resistance will be the same value as the series resistance. Knowing our current source and resistance values, we can draw our equivalent parallel circuit here. So it's our voltage source and the resistance, and now we can make it as a parallel. So we have current and we have parallel resistance to this current source. Now we can do uh, for the same voltage source in the current source conversion for battery 2 with the series resistor R5. Here we have battery 2 and series resistor R5. So with this part, the uh, current source will be minus 4 volt because uh, our resistance is 1 ohm. And then we can draw our uh, parallel circuit for this current source. Here is uh, what did we have and now what do we have? With the parallel source with the current source. Next method. So now we can redraw our circuit with the two current sources and parallel resistors. Here. So we have our current source and we make parallel resistor R1, R2, we have R3 is uh, general for all, is uh, for all loops and now we have second uh, our current source and uh, two parallel resistors, R4 and uh, R5. Next part or next step, we have to replace resistance resistor in ohms with the conductance in uh, series. So, uh, what we do? The Siemens is the unit of conductance having replaced now absolute MQO, inverse of N ohm. So G1 will be uh, 1.0.5 Siemens, uh, G2 it will be 0.25 Siemens, G3 0.4 Siemens, G4 0.2 Siemens and uh, G5 is 1 Siemens. Now we can update drawing with this calculated conductance value. Here is our conductance values and uh, see that we have two parallel parts and we can say that it's GA and the GB and we can calculate also them. For this part, to simplify it, 
we can combine this parallel reduction. So we just add with them and uh, GA will be 0.75 Siemens and uh, GB will be 1.2 Siemens. So we can redraw it. Now we have only uh, three uh, conductances with the known values. So this is step three. So we replace it resistance resistance in all these conductance in Siemens. And uh, before in step two, we replace it our uh, voltage source into current source. Now step four. So we have to write uh, PCL for current uh, of current flow equation for each unknown voltage node. So following the known voltage method, now we can write PCL equation for all unknown voltage nodes. So remember we have we have one and the second. So we have to write down our PCL equation. So I1 equal to GA this J times V1. So through this loop we have only one voltage. Next part also we have G3 and in G3 we have intersection of two voltages, voltage drop is V1 and V2. So we can write down the y, V1 minus V2 is I1. And for I2, for this part, we can say that we have GB is going, so times V2 because we have only uh, one voltage drop in this part. And uh, with the G3, we have V1 and uh, V2. This is our two equations. And the note that we have similarity of these two equations. The sum of conductances connected to the first node is the positive coefficient for the first voltage one. And that node is equation one, this one part, this part. Eh? And uh, likewise in the equation two, we have the other coefficient also included to this part is all negative. For both equations, left-hand side is equal to the respective current source connected to the node. This pattern allows us to quickly write the equation by inspection. And if you can learn this relatively simple pattern for writing PCL equations using conductance with the node voltage method can be useful for quickly analyzing many circuits. So, now let's rewrite these two equations to demonstrate the pattern for writing this equation by inspection. So, I1 equal to GA plus G3 times V1 and minus G3 times V2. And uh, for I2, we can write the same GB time plus G3 times V2 and G3 times V1. So now we can solve the set of simultaneous KCL equations for the unknown voltages. From here we can use two equations to solve the two unknown voltages in our circuit. So we can substitute our known currents and conductances and rearrange them to order like terms. So E1 is I1 is 5 plus 0 0.75 plus 4 times V1 and minus 0 0.4 times V2 or 1.5 V1 minus 0 0.4 V2 and uh, the same for the second equation and solving this simultaneous equation as a, uh, for the mesh voltage flow by substituting uh, numbers so we can find our result so V1 will be 3.5 8 ampere uh, volt and the V2 will be 1.5 uh, volt. This is end of our lecture. Thank you for attention and uh, please do not forget to subscribe and uh, I will upload another uh, 
lectures uh, with the course of electric technology.